of this month so with their nam and about the kingdom in which Allah grant to the servant and all of that is an example of the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad that all reality is within the Holy Qur'an and all power from Holy Qur'an and all kitab taking their power from the reality of Holy Qur'an. So means all the qisa and stories are a sample or example of the power that Allah has given to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad On Surah 27 I think it's Ayatul Kareem 38. Inshaul Hajj Shah we can recite 2738, Surah Nam verse 38 inshaAllah. A'udhu billahi min InshaAllah is everything working? InshaAllah. Well, Surah Surah Kareem, Alhamdulillah, Ayatul Kareem, Allah giving to us from the example of a mighty king whom Allah had given an immense kingdom and that Sayyidina Sulaiman is asking, O oh my assembly of chiefs, these huge creations of authority from the jinn, from demons, from angels, from his people of the book, everything. O oh, assembly of my chiefs, which of you can bring me the throne of Bilgis, the kingdom of Shiva, before they come to me in submission? That they're going. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To accept the will of God and submit to the Kingdom of God. And so alhamdulillah because tariqah comes to teach people that the reality of guidance through Qur'an that when a king and a prophet that whom Allah had given prophecy and a kingdom that he becomes king of the world and at the same time a prophet of Allah and then Allah is giving to us an example of one of the events and He calls upon His assembly and says, which one of you can bring me the throne of this kingdom whom I'm going to bring into submission? They're going to come into submission when they see this might and majesty, which one of you can bring me the throne? And we stop right there and people whom say, oh ask nobody but Allah. So we don't understand where they get that from, where that understanding comes from when all of Qur'an is giving examples. And this one especially because Sayyidina Sulaiman is asking from unseen. 
He's asking from all the men of authority whom are under his command of the jinn, the ifrit, the malaika, the people, human ends and asking them, not Allah, which one of you can bring me the throne before they come into submission? And the throne signifies their power, that the symbol of a throne is the seat of power. That which one of you can bring me and this opens up now the whole opening of these spiritual authorities and this struggle upon the earth. And these are the kingdoms that are vying for authority and power. We said before that one, this is a sign that to seek from Allah's bounty because two verses later once they bring the throne and they show the might and majesty. Then Sayyidina Sulaiman acknowledges that this is a gift from Allah that this throne that was placed in front of me, this is a gift to show that if I was thankful, means the power and those of power that Allah has surrounded me by, therefore giving my kingdom an immense power, their ability to bring this that I asked for was a test to see that if I'm thankful for what Allah has given to me. So it means that in our life asking for madad, asking for support, asking from unseen support, all of this is from Qur'an. So these people whom they study with these Wahhabi teachings, it's shaitan that tries to block everything, every barakah, every power, every authority from Holy Qur'an, they misquote everything, misunderstand everything. And Allah giving us the clear proof in Surah Al-Nam that this is a king and a prophet of Allah not a common person asking even. Someone whom already has a connection with Allah but asking from his kingdom that Allah has given to him that this kingdom and these subjects are yours. Means that whatever they possess, ask from them. One is because you show humility, never to be arrogant and say, no I deal only with Allah, I don't need to ask these people. But ask of them because Allah has given to all of them different favours and different abilities. But it takes a humble person to acknowledge that whether I have that power or not, in my humility I'll ask, who can bring me this that I request? So the concept of asking the Sahib al-Imdad, the one whom's supporting all the, the supporters that Allah has given to them authorities and powers, asking is a sign of humility, a great sign of humility that doesn't even mean or show that Sayyidina Sulaiman himself salam, didn't have the power to bring it. But to show humility that from what Allah, Allah has given to me, these servants have abilities and I'm asking to be humble and which one of you can bring it to me? So then clearly asking is a sign of humility. It's not something forbidden, it's, it's, it's a sign of arrogance for the one who thinks that I ask no one from except but Allah. It's a sign of arrogance of shaitan, means that we define more and more in this life of the cave because now we're in the cave. This dirt opened into the cave and now in this surah Allah ta'aseen from this fire of purified secret, tilka ayatul Qur'an it is this fire is a sign of the power of this Qur'an wal kitabin mubeen. The kitab is the manifestation of Qur'an which is the reality of Prophet because Qur'an is, is a non-created word of Allah But that which manifests is the kitab. So that's why Allah is defining that the ayat al-Qur'an, that the signs of my Qur'an and the manifest book of Allah which is the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad And those whom are in the cave they begin to understand that the party of Satan, they 
base everything on arrogance and they negate the believer from receiving these rewards and these keys and these ways of salvation because these two flames of the dajjal. Showing the believer what is paradise but it's actually fire and that which is actually paradise is veiled with a fire that, don't do it, don't do this, don't do that. Distinguishing between these two then is the belief of this way and the belief of tariqahs that Allah is giving to us. Of course there are people around you, be humble and ask from them, request from them, ask that they pray, ask that they pray for you for you don't know which one of them has different gifts from Allah The path is based on humility and not arrogance. And as a result of that du'a that Sayyidina Sulaiman opened up then becomes the whole system on earth now is fighting for. He said that when he asked that, bring me this authority, bring me this kingdom, immediately the ifrit which are the nefarious jinn races that link very much close to shayateen, the very fiery nature and they take more of their guidance from shayateen and very unstable in their nature immediately said, we'll bring the throne, we'll steal the throne was their intention. It's going to take a bit of time, they're going to uproot it and with their power bring the whole system into, into that vicinity. And as soon as he's asking for that, these are now the two authorities that are ruling this dunya. As soon as they're free, said, it takes some time, we're going to bring it. Allah inspired one from whom had knowledge of their book and said, by the time your eyes move, he replicated and brought it so that the ifrit wouldn't have a chance to fulfill the du'a of the Prophet of God. So means then that became a huge opening that the one whom had knowledge of the book in the kingdom of Sayyidina Sulaiman salam, by the blink of a thought he photocopied the entire throne and made it to appear where Sayyidina Sulaiman salam wanted it to appear. So that the dalil in this court of law, that the precedent in this court of law was that use the people of knowledge and don't enter into asking ifrit from their powers. Had the ifrit granted it, it would have set a precedent in using those dark forces to fulfill your commands because these are all a sign from Allah that when you're in need there are powers and authorities that are under your dominion. Ask from them to help you. That's why we said, if you're ever in difficulty, Ya Rijalullah, we have the du'a at the beginning of our salawat book, Ainuna bi awlillah, means that ask upon awliyaullah if you're ever in need. Because from these category of budal, nujab, nuqab, awtad, wal akhyar, malaika, wa jinn, seven categories of spiritual beings, Allah gave to them. That is the du'a of Sayyidina Sulaiman so verse 27, Surah 27 verse 38 is like the caption at the top of calling upon these rijal, O oh my chieftains and the chiefs whom Allah has given authority that satisfy my need, I'm in need of this and you call upon rijalullah for their support and for their madad and for their help. And as a result Allah wanted to establish the precedent that no, the people of the book and the people who have knowledge of the kitab, their power is far more powerful and it came within the speed of thought. He thought of it, his eyes opened and they photocopied and brought the throne into his presence. And that has an amazing ability, amazing reality. One. Then the ifrit became the kingdom of the Illuminati. So that's the force that is trying to rule this earth when they understood those realities 
and they understood that they are not going to be from the people of a knowledge of a book because the book requires submission. To be from the people of the book means Ahlul Kitab and that book before was uh, the previous religions and the book that contains all books is Holy Qur'an. The Torah, the Injil, the Psalms, all of them exist within Qur'an, Qur'an al-Majeed. So when Allah is bringing for Prophet it's the activation of Holy Qur'an that if there's a book that can revive the dead it's the Holy Qur'an. Means anything that's necessary is in Holy Qur'an and then Allah asks from us, be Rabbaniyoon, those whom they learn the kitab and that they taught the kitab. And that's why the surah begins with, tilka ayat al-Qur'an, Allah gives to these awliya the secret because it's all about this kitab. That this kitab for you, his name is Taseem and Allah is describing this kitab and its secret. That it's tilka ayat al-Qur'an, Allah is testifying to Taseem that he is the and it is the sign of Qur'an because Qur'an is not created. So the signs and the power of Qur'an must be on creation but it's not created. Well, Kitab and Mubeen, the walking Kitab of Allah is the reality of Prophet So it means that fire and that love within the soul of Prophet and this power is Tahseen And Allah giving to us that if you want this power and the power of the book means the power of Prophet is the power of all their holy books because Prophet was all their holy books. The fire within the heart of the soul of Prophet was before all of their forms that came upon this earth. And la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi alayhi wa nadeem. It always had to come from Allah to the reality of Prophet out to creation. So it means that Sayyidina Musa had to take that same power from Prophet Sayyidina Sulaiman take the same power, Sayyidina Adam take the same power. All the Prophets of Allah once they manifest on this earth they had to take from La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah because it's tawheed, it's the oneness of Allah that never changed. From that one source of power it had to come. So then its full power is when the presence of Prophet is upon this earth activating all realities. Because each one just had like a, a line of the power, like one wire of that power, one wire of that power. But when the whole trunk of the reality appears upon this earth, means the arrival of the arrival of Taseen, tilka ayat al Qur'an wal kitab and mubeen is walking upon the earth, means Allah la wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyun adheem is now moving upon this earth. Allah's might and majesty and powers that flow through the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So it's immense and Allah giving to us that the one from the knowledge of the book brought everything within the speed of thought. Open that reality for yourself and that becomes the way of the mu'min, the way of the believers is to open the reality of the kitab. And that's why the people of reality's teaching, if it's the kitab you want and the power from the kitab you want, the knowledge from the kitab that you want, well it's in the persona of Sayyidina Muhammad So means that if you're not loving him not respecting him then it's really not the kitab that you're looking for. And that's why then this way of reality has so much power, so much blessings. Because the walking Qur'an 
the walking reality of Allah that teaching all the beatific characteristics, all of these realities and reflections that are walking upon this earth, then is in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad By the milad and by the celebration of the milad is the sparking of that light within the heart. That's the, the fire that we're talking about, that Allah has that when you're coming into the milad Everyone like if you see those movies where you're entering into a cave, there's one torch and everybody comes with their torch that has no fire on it and goes to the one fire and begins to spark it and now they can walk into the cave illuminated. That reality of that fire and that torch, that ancient torch that Sayyidina Musa saw and went into the presence of that fire. That Sayyidina Ibrahim was cast into that fire, that Allah giving to us on the holy month of Rabbil Awwal. That that's the month in which the believers they're marching into that cave, they're asking Allah light my torch with the light of Taseen That it is tilka ayatul Qur'an, that this fire is a sign from the signs of Holy Qur'an. And that it is the kitab and mubeen, the clear and proven kitab of Allah And that they light that torch and the secret of the lighting of that torch is in the celebration of Milad al-Nabi So it's not something small, it's immense. It's the light in which their reality is to be opened and sparked, the light in which that the Prophets were begging to seek it, were asking for an audience to enter into it in which Nabi Musa was told in this surah that, you've entered into this light, all who are around this light are blessed, all who are in this light are blessed, take off your shoes because you are in the presence of Allah means take off your shoes made from donkey hide, take off the shoes of, of animalistic egoism and bad character and enter into my Divinely Presence. For if you enter into the oceans of Holy Qur'an, Allah's response, Ana Allah, you are in the presence of Allah Almighty and that presence can only be in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad That's the magnitude of the hadith in which Prophet is teaching, Allah's not on heavens and He's not on earth, He's in the heart of His believer. He's in the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah That when they go to the Kaaba is the secret of the presence of Nabi'een. Allah describes the house of the Kaaba where they call the house of Allah is what? Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhada wa Salihin. That's why it's four corners and Allah I'm with them. But who's there? The soul of Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. And you make your tawaf to be around that reality, dressed by that reality. But when you go to Medina, a different hadith is teaching you, I'm not on heaven, I'm not on earth, I'm in the heart of my believer. Because where the soul and the body of Prophet resting place and veiling place from his dunya physicality, he's in the complete annihilation and presence with his Lord Allah Means Allah's might and majesty and emanation upon the holy soul of Prophet in Medina to Munawwara. And that's the immensity of Medina and the immensity of the secrets of Medina. Because it's light, it's the city of light. Mecca is, is the haramain, means the abode in which your physicality should stop haram, no more haram. But Medina to Munawwara, the city of light, it's the city of light because Allah's light is illuminating the soul of Prophet the illumination of Holy Qur'an and the fountains of all these realities flowing from that location and that blessing. 
So it means throughout this journey of ours everything Allah has hidden of these realities and these, these oceans to achieve. This knowledge and illumination that they're faking, these societies they fake the system because they can't become from the people of Kitab. As a result they went towards the Afrit and the entrapment of Afrit and the serving of the Afrit in which the Afrit will grant them their wishes but it takes some time and their entire system which they try to recruit people is to come to their system of worshipping and serving the Afrit. And what Allah wanted for the believers is become from Ahli Kitab, the people of the Divinely Knowledges, the people of Holy Qur'an, those whom they read the book, studied the book and then taught the book of Allah We pray that Allah grant us from those lights, grant us from the immensity of Ta'aseen and that the, the immensity of these blessings of this holy month that we can meditate and contemplate and understand the importance of Prophet in our lives and our existence and the immensity of if Allah grant from love and muhabbat an opening within the heart. That's what we try to convey is that love and this Divinely love is based on action and good character. If the one lacks action and lacks the good character something's wrong. So when you love somebody you have a certain behavior and certain characteristics. It's not something said by tongue but it's something with the entire soul and personality of the person that shows the love and the, the way of these realities. We pray that Allah grant us from this sincerity and this khuluq, this character in which it exhibits the love of Allah love of Sayyidina Muhammad and love of awliyaullah fi samah wa fil ard inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.